Hi, welcome to our first chemistry discussion. So this is the chemical basis of life, um, the first part, and the second part will be organic chemistry. This is a lot of inorganic chemistry. Um, the questions we're going to address uh, um, include why is water so important to biology? Why does it have some unusual properties? Um, and how do those properties relate to biology? And the last point there is, is probably the most important one. We can talk about the chemistry until the cows come home. But um, unless we can relate the chemistry to the biological processes that we're going to be interested in, um, then it's just chemistry for chemistry's sake. Um, and really, you can think about biology as um, applied chemistry. So all the chemistry you learn in your chemistry classes, um, you want to take that and use it in a, in a biological context. So let's kind of start off with something simple. Um, I want to start off with you pausing the video for a couple of minutes, however long it takes. And I want you to draw me a, a water molecule. Um, so that's an atomic uh, representation or a diagram of a water molecule. So pause the video now and, and see how you get on with that. Okay, so um, like I've said before, when we, when we do these things where I just ask you to stop the video and, and do something, um, it's really important that you, that you do it, otherwise um, you don't really learn a whole lot. So um, kind of what might you have drawn? So, so here are some things that you, you could have drawn. So um, Here's a uh, one representation of a water molecule. You could have drawn something like that. It's a ball and stick model. Um, other people have drawn something like this, a little more chemically complicated, um, even more complex. Uh, is this diagram here, uh, where the electrons have been drawn in, and actually this isn't a very good diagram, but we can talk about that in a moment. And then some of you may have drawn something like this space filling representation. Now, whatever you draw, one of the most important things is you actually label the atoms. And so this diagram here is okay because by convention, hydrogen is white and oxygen is red. So this diagram, the top left, and this one down here in the bottom right, um, an expert would understand what's been drawn because of the, the color. Now, if, if you don't have colored pencils or pens or something like that, then you really need to label um, the atoms you've drawn. And so uh, this diagram down here is pretty good. Uh, we've got solid black lines. Those show covalent bonds. We'll take a look at covalent bonds in a moment. And this diagram is a little bit more advanced because it's indicating um, something special about the oxygen and something special about the hydrogen. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. And so this little Greek letter here is, is delta. Um, and so is what this means is electronegative. And this Delta plus means electropositive. So we're going to talk about that in a moment and what it means for the water molecule. So you drew something like this. Um, that's that's pretty good. Your chemistry is not, not looking too bad. If you drew something different, then we, uh, we might want to meet and, and take a look at what you drew and, and maybe correct it. Um, so here's another representation that we that we could look at. And so as what we're seeing here is that here is the uh, here is one of the hydrogens, and here's the other hydrogen, and here's the oxygen atom. And this is a little bit more complicated than the other diagrams, just because it's showing uh, some charges. And so here we're looking at the charge in the nucleus. And so the charge in the hydrogen nucleus is one proton, so that's shown as one plus. And this doesn't mean that the, the hydrogen atom here has a positive charge. It just means that the charge in the nucleus is one plus, because there's just one proton there. And then in the... In the um, oxygen nucleus there are eight protons which means the nucleus has um, uh, eight positive charges eight protons now in a neutral atom like the hydrogen here or the oxygen here the negative and the positive charges have to be balanced and so if there are eight positively charged protons in the nucleus of the oxygen then there must be eight electrons and we can count them up one two three four five six seven uh, this one here belongs to the oxygen and then eight this one here belongs to the oxygen uh, this electron here and the other one down here they belong to the hydrogen we'll talk about how those electrons contribute to a covalent bond in a moment so um, the charges are balanced, eight negative electrons and eight positive protons. And when I say negative and positive, I mean one single positive charge. So an electron has a single negative charge and a proton has a single positive charge. And so the eight protons in the nucleus of the oxygen are balanced by the eight negative charges in the electrons. And so let's look at these electrons over here and down here where the kind of a hydrogen is interacting with the with the oxygen. So Hydrogen has one electron, and um, and the uh, the oxygen has has eight, and so in the outer shell of the oxygen, 
there would normally be six electrons, six in the outer shell of oxygen and two in the inner shell. So this is the inner shell of electrons here, the inner orbital, and then this is the outer orbital of the oxygen, and these are the, the energy states in which electrons exist. This is the Bohr model of the atom. And so we're not worried about these inner two electrons in oxygen. Um, we're worried about the outer six. And so here are two. Here's another two, that's four, there's one there, and there's one there, so that's six. And what about these other electrons? These other electrons are coming from the hydrogens. And so the hydrogen, in its shell, it only has one shell, um, it's only got one electron to balance the one positive charge in the nucleus of the hydrogen there. Um, now, atoms are most stable when they have a complete outer shell of electrons. So for hydrogen, its outer shell, it only has one outer shell. Its outer shell can only, can only hold two electrons. Now oxygen, you can see here, has got two shells, the inner shell and the outer shell. So the outer shell in oxygen can hold eight electrons. Um, but the outer shell of oxygen on its own only has six. And so to make the outer shell um, full or complete, um, oxygen has got to try and get two electrons from somewhere, and it gets those electrons um, from from hydrogen. And so it, it's sharing, in this case, it's sharing an electron up here with hydrogen and down here with hydrogen. And so when oxygen shares two electrons with two hydrogens, that gives it an outer shell complement of eight electrons. So if you count it out, there's two, four, six, eight. It's got six of its own, and it borrows two from hydrogen. So hydrogen is doing the same thing. It's trying to become more stable. Now that's really anthropomorphic and not a fantastic way for me to express it, is what hydrogen is trying to do, trying to do, is to become more stable. And it does that by reacting with the oxygen. Um, and so we end up with two electrons in the outer shell of hydrogen here and two down here. And so when these atoms combine in this way, we get more stability in terms of the oxygen, more stability in terms of the hydrogen, and we get a water molecule. So let's do a quick question. Um, so is what we just looked at were, were electrons being shared between two atoms. And when electrons uh, are shared between two atoms, you get a covalent bond forming. And that's going to be one of the really important bonds we talk about um, when we talk about molecules a little bit later. So in the covalent bond we just looked at, in, 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 the, in the covalent bond between the oxygen and hydrogen, the water molecule we just looked at, how many electrons were there? So how many electrons in the covalent bond between oxygen and hydrogen in water? So again, um, if you have to or you want to think about it, pause the video. Um, and, and see how you get on with this one. Okay, so um, if we take a look at, at this diagram again, uh, we can see that in this covalent bond, which is shown here by these two electrons being shared, there are two electrons. So two electrons being shared in the bond between hydrogen and oxygen um, is giving us one covalent bond. So this is a covalent bond, two electrons being shared. So the answer to that previous question was two electrons. Um, now if we had a double bond, uh, like in carbon dioxide, for example, then there would be four electrons. And if we had a triple bond, like in um, uh, diatomic nitrogen, N2, the gas, there would be six electrons, because it's three covalent bonds, each covalent bond, two electrons, six in total. So um, now, if you think back to one of those early diagrams that, that I showed you, one of those diagrams of the water molecule had um, a a little delta negative next to the oxygen, a delta positive next to the hydrogen. And so we said the oxygen was electronegative and the hydrogen was electropositive. So what does that mean? Um, and this is really important. And we're going to come back to this and re revisit it multiple times because it's so important. So what is that all about? Let's, let's take a look at that in the next slide here. Um, if an atom is said to be electropositive, that is a relative statement. It's electropositive relative to something else. So here, the hydrogen is said to be electropositive relative to oxygen, and the oxygen is electronegative relative to the electropositive hydrogen. So these are relative statements. This atom of hydrogen here is electropositive compared to this oxygen here, which is electronegative compared to the to the hydrogen. So what does that mean? Electronegativity is a measure of how attracted an atom's nucleus is to its electrons and to other electrons as well. So um, hydrogen here is electropositive. So um, that means it doesn't really care about the electrons, whereas oxygen 
is really electronegative. So when an atom is really electronegative, it's really got a strong attraction for electrons. So if we think about what's going on in this dashed line here, this, this is a covalent bond. It's meant to be a solid line, but the artist has drawn it as a dashed line for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so this line here represents a covalent bond. And in that covalent bond, remember, there are two electrons being shared. Um, so those electrons are they're somewhere around these atoms and we don't know where this is one of the things about electrons um, you can't predict where they will be um, uh, around an atom and so there are some electrons somewhere around here in this bond between the oxygen and hydrogen but because electrons are more attracted to an electronegative atom the electrons will spend more time by the by the uh, the oxygen because it's electronegative it really wants to pull those electrons towards it so if we think about the probability of where you would find electrons and that's if we just took a snapshot in time and we said where are the electrons um, based on the probability um, uh, models is what we would see is that the electrons would be more likely to be near the oxygen and so the electrons remember have a slight negative charge so that means the oxygen here is going to be slightly negatively charged compared to the hydrogen and the hydrogen is slightly positively charged compared to the oxygen. So the hydrogen is slightly positively charged because the electrons are pulled away from it by the oxygen. And so if you if you take a neutral atom and you pull the negative charges away from it a little bit, you end up with a slight positive charge. Now these aren't complete charges. So the electrons don't completely come to the oxygen over here and they don't completely get pulled away from the hydrogens. This is a probability distribution. So it's more likely that we will find the electrons in the covalent bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen of this one down here close to the oxygen so that means there's more likely to be negative charge over here than over here so what that means is that this part of the water molecule here becomes slightly negatively charged compared to this part and this part and so that means that this is slightly positive charge this is slightly positive charge and this is slightly negative charge so what we've got effectively is a molecule of water with two slightly different charges across it. And you can think about that like a battery. A battery's got a positive end and a negative end. Um, the Earth has um, two different poles. Uh, it's got the Arctic and the Antarctic. One's got bears, one's got penguins. They're, they're, they're different. And so this water molecule has different ends, if you like. This is slightly negative and this is slightly positive. So water is a polar molecule. And it is this polarity which leads to many of its properties. And those properties are critical um, for, for life on Earth. And so the reason that we have a water-based biological uh, ecosystem, if you like, um, is because of this unusual behavior of electrons, not unusual, it's completely predictable, but it's, it's because of this behavior of the electrons um, in the covalent bond between oxygen and hydrogen. And so this bond in a water molecule and this bond here, these are described as polar covalent bonds because the electrons are pulled in one direction more than they are uh, equally distributed. Okay, so we we'll stop there. Um, watch it through again if you if you've got uh, any any concerns and um, Skype any questions. Set up a discussion if you've got any questions, and we will pick up this uh, next time we chat.